So today, my guest here is Amber Gilbert. Amber is a nurse practitioner, mom of two, and life coach for busy working and healthcare moms. Amber encourages self-care, mindset, as well as personal development. She reminds us that we can have a career and also be a good mom. In essence, she is passionate to help mothers live their best lives. Welcome, Amber. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited as well. Yes, absolutely. So Amber, why did you decide to become a life coach and help other moms? Well, my journey started essentially with my own personal journey. So probably I would say maybe about two and a half years ago, I just kind of reached this point where I felt incredibly overwhelmed and burnt out. And I was struggling to, I felt, I guess, kind of lost or stuck career-wise and almost personally as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I had two young children. I was working full-time as a nurse practitioner, and I just felt like something had to give. Like I just wasn't able to keep up with where things were. And I was feeling really torn about do I want to keep working as a nurse practitioner? Like, do I even like being in healthcare? You know, I kind Mm -hmm. of had, I was almost kind of questioning where I was in life. And so I started diving into personal development, um, reading different books about burnout. And then I actually worked with a life coach myself. And then slowly my life started to transform. And I'm now at a place where I feel really good about where things are at and how I'm managing life and my career. And so I wanted to help other moms and women with that same thing. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you're doing that. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so with a life coach, I mean, I feel like Oh gosh, I everyone needs them. Like I feel like I need to do life coaching and like there's just so much I feel like when we're when someone's objectively looking at what you know we're thinking and all, it just is so helpful to see it from an outside I outside standpoint, I feel like. And uh that's wonderful. I'm so um and I really have been enjoying following you along on social media. Um like I think all of the stuff is just really applicable to moms, working moms and healthcare moms. And I noticed that there was a really encouraging post on there where you wrote about your dad and it was just so beautiful. Like I feel like um you are essentially saying that summers aren't the only time that we have. Like sometimes as moms, we're like, oh, we only have so many summers together. And, but there are other times there. And can you share with us a little bit about what you talked about with that? I thought that was such a nice story. Yes. Thank you. Where this came from is because I think, um, I don't know if you noticed this, but what I noticed going around a lot on social media is like, you only have 18 summers with your kids or there's only so many summers. So make sure you make the most of it. And while I think that is really important to be aware of and make sure you're really, you know, living in the moment and being present, I think sometimes for Um, those of us who are especially working moms where we maybe don't have the whole summer off or, you know, we're working during other times of the year, sometimes that can feel like a lot of pressure or maybe add to some, you know, maybe guilt that we feel about the fact that we're not able to be home with our kids all summer long. Mm -hmm. And I had seen um, someone else, another mom on social media post about how, Yes, there's only, you know, 18 summers, but you also have however many thousands of mornings and evenings and weekends. And after seeing that, I was just kind of thinking about my own childhood and both of my parents worked. Um, And so the story that I was telling is my dad worked more. His job just required him to be at work um, a lot longer. He worked quite a few evenings and Saturdays. Um, but because he had, or he worked some evenings, he got certain mornings off every week. And what he started doing with my brother and I is, um, on his mornings off, instead of us having to get on the bus to go to school, he would take us to school. But beforehand, we would go to breakfast together. And we grew up in a small town in Iowa. So kind of the main place we could go was McDonald's. But as you can imagine, as kids, that's fun, right? And So we did this 
honestly, I don't even remember how old we were when it started, maybe elementary, all the way through high school. And we went, you know, those mornings we had breakfast, we sat down, we talked, and then my dad would take us to school. And I was thinking about that and how that is something that my brother and I still talk about. It's um, a memory that we hold, you know, so dear or like near and dear to our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I thought about how, you know, that was time that my dad had that he decided to you know, make extra time for us, create memories in that way, enjoy that time with us since sometimes he wasn't there in the evenings or for other um, times of the day. And so I kind of shared that as a reminder that, you know, sometimes we can feel like everything has to look a certain way or we better enjoy like every single summer, Mm -hmm. but there's also so many other ways that we can create that time and that memory um, and connection with our children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's such a good point because we do feel that pressure as moms just to do all of these things. And mm-hmm. and I feel like even when I am doing things with my kids, I have like in the back of my head, oh, I need to be enjoying this. Like this is, I'm supposed to yes. be enjoying this. And, um, you know, and it's just, it reminds me also of one time I was writing about gratitude and enjoying our days. And I put all the days of a year into like a candy jar and like had was M&M candy symbolizing a day. And it it was helpful in the sense that like I was objectively able to look at it and be like, you know, there's different color days, but every, there is a day for, you know, weekends and weekdays. And there's all of these opportunities that we have. And it's not just those 18 summers that are now, gosh, if I calculate them out, are less than that. And so. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I actually like that because as moms, we're all aware of how fast time goes or how Mm -hmm. fast our children grow. Like that's something we're all aware of. Right. Um, But I think also recognizing there is, I think sometimes we don't realize how much time there is as well. So I think sometimes looking at that in a different way can make it kind of stand out like, okay, I have all these days, you know, especially Mm -hmm. if maybe you do have a day where it wasn't a great day or you weren't as present or things didn't go as well as you wanted to, to be able to kind of, you know, let go of that and be like, yes, but look at how many days I do have left. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I feel like even the day is that we just aren't feeling it. uh, I, I, I try to remind myself that, okay, well, you know, I, right now I'm not feeling it, but I'm going to, I get, I, uh, James Clear says, I don't have to do something. I get to do something. So like if I'm dealing with a six child or, or something like that, I, I can easily have in my mind, I have to do this. I have to deal with this, but it really is, I get to. And I think that perspective really helps rewire my brain. I mean, obviously easier said than done sometimes, but, um, it is helpful. I was telling Amber before we started that, um, yesterday evening, we had like a bat fly into the house. (laughs) It was just chaotic. And, um, it was, you know, I was so annoyed that there was a bat in the house. It was when we let the dog inside and <laughs> those things fly really fast. But, you know, now that it's the morning, it's more of a funny story. So it's like, well, you know, mm-hmm. it was really annoying at the time, but now it's funny and I can share it. So, um, so that's wonderful. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's true for a lot of it. And that's some of what I learned with coaching and what I work with other moms about is one, when maybe you're having an off day or you're not feeling it, that it's okay. Yes. You know, we're humans. And I think sometimes there is this pressure that society or, you know, ourselves, we put on ourselves to, you know, like I have to be enjoying every single moment. So Mm -hmm. it's okay if you're not, but also, yes, sometimes changing your perspective or changing the way you're thinking about a situation can really make a difference for how you feel and how you're able to kind of carry on throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, Amber, 
What are your thoughts about career burnout? So like in particular, um, you know, I know you coach a lot of nurse practitioners. Um, so nurse practitioner burnout, um, how do you know if you're burned out and what are some suggestions you have for self-care during those times? Sure. Um, I think that burnout is a very hot topic right now, yeah. especially in the healthcare world. And I think it's very, very real and prevalent. Um, I think, you know, the healthcare system has changed a lot, even since I entered it, even in the last few years, yeah. there is, um, increasing demands and expectations. Um, of course the pandemic played a huge role in a lot of this. And so I think, um, to know if you're burned out, I think sometimes it's individual, mm -hmm. but for myself and some of the other women that I've worked with, a lot of times you're feeling very overwhelmed, um, dreading going into work every single day. Maybe you're even, you feel like you're somewhat um, emotionally removed, not able to be present, more irritable, you know, difficulty concentrating. You can't actually be present or enjoy the things that you want to be enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I know, you know, I loved being a nurse and healthcare was always something I wanted to do and have a passion for. And then it got to a point where I was questioning if I even wanted to stay in this field or profession at all. Yeah. And that was also how I kind of knew, like, you know, I'm kind of, this isn't right for me. Like something's not right. Absolutely. And so some of the things that I think are most important is one, just kind of recognizing where you're at. Um, awareness is a huge piece. So not only recognizing that maybe you're burning out, but starting to look at areas of your life, um, at work and sometimes even outside of work that may be contributing mm -hmm. and not as a way to say you're doing anything wrong. And, you know, there's going to be pieces of it that we can't necessarily control or change, but looking at what may be contributing to you feeling this way and where can there be, um, where can you make changes? What do you have control over? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is, maybe it is the job itself and maybe, you know, a change is necessary. Maybe it's, you know, changing hours, putting up boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. I know a big thing for me was making sure I was getting adequate sleep yeah. and um, starting to listen to my own kind of instincts and voice when I was at work mm -hmm. um, about what I wanted to say yes to, what I wanted to say no to, what I was comfortable with doing, um, and just starting to be very firm about um, even, you know, how I was going to chart or how I was going to spend my lunch hour or different things like that to make sure that I was taking care of myself and honoring my needs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, are there opportunities, sometimes for me, I know like when I was working uh, to go outside can help me. I, and that's, I feel like as I get older, um, I just try to see what does it help or how do I uh, respond to stress and what is the best way I respond? And I know for me, that's the outdoors. And that may be different for our listeners, um, but maybe like writing something down or doing something like that before you do get stressed. Is that something that um, you would recommend like in my situation, like Maybe, Valerie, if you're stressed out right now, just go take a walk on your next break or something like that. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head that part of it, um, which is, you know, kind of what I help people with, too, is recognizing what works for yeah. you. Because I think there's a lot of information out there like, oh, you know, do this or do that or this technique really works. And all of those techniques are excellent. Mm -hmm. But what works for some people doesn't work for other people. Absolutely. I do think that it's very important. I know myself when I was a new nurse practitioner, um, because I was busy, I, you, I would work almost my entire lunch hour. Mm -hmm. And I eventually I learned, even though maybe I have one more chart left at the end of the day, like if you don't take a break just to step away and let your brain kind of relax, you know, when you're in it constantly, that whole period of time, it, it does add to the stress and make 
you feel worse for most people that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. So I know it's hard to not want to kind of get caught up, but I do really suggest for everyone that even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that you do something during your, you know, your break or time that you have set aside that's not work related. Yeah. Maybe it's just sitting in your office and listening to music. Maybe you want to go outside and take a walk. Maybe you do want to kind of um, brain dump some things that were really stressful this morning. And then later you can look at, okay, what is there anything that I can do tomorrow or next week to make that situation a little bit better for mm-hmm. me? Absolutely. Those are all great points. Yeah. It kind of reminds me you. of, you know, a little bit of that like neuroplasticity that I talk about sometimes of practicing. Like we're exercising. To, like sometimes it's like hard. For, I know for me, it's hard for me to step away from something. If I have something I need to do, yes, I want to get it done. But mm-hmm. it is kind of leaning into that a harder part for me and saying, you know what, I'm going to practice and exercise my brain right now and trying a different pathway. It's um, maybe a little bit of a back road as opposed to this highway that I have that I really want to do. But in the long run, I feel like I can see those results and um, allowing that time for myself, even if it is for a few minutes, like you're saying. Yeah. And I think, and you probably know this too, a lot of the research shows that actually you know, sometimes if we spend too much time trying to get something done, our productivity and our results are actually worse. Yeah. Like we need time away or, you know, mental breaks. And that's actually better for us to come back and have more creativity or come up with solutions or get things done. Um, because I'm sure as you know, too, it's like if you're exhausted or you've been working at something for a while, it's harder and harder to kind of keep Mm -hmm. Um, getting it done, even though you want to. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I think that's so relevant. It is very helpful. I know for me, um, recently, I know that I kind of need a break in the afternoon. So I try to just Mm -hmm. lay down for a few minutes if I can and um, just reset my mind. And that seems Mm -hmm. to really help. Um, And obviously everyone's schedule is different and that works different for everyone. But um, yeah, finding that time that works for you. Those are Great tips. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. And <laughs> so I noticed on social media that you talk a lot about priorities and mm-hmm. prioritizing what truly matters. So it yeah. reminds me an episode. My kids have been watching Bluey a lot recently. And there's one that talks about when your outside, outside voice says yes, but your inside voice says no. Can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like sometimes as moms and as working moms or in healthcare, we do as adults struggle with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. My kids love Bluey too. I know exactly what episode (laughs) you're talking about. And I actually love that one because I think it's so applicable to kids and adults, right? Because we all have been in situations where we can feel kind of inside that we don't want to do something, but we end up saying Mm -hmm. yes. And a lot of reasons that I talk about um, prioritizing what matters is because what I learned um, through, you know, the work that I've done with myself and, you know, through reading and everything else is Um, What I've noticed for myself and a lot of other moms is there's kind of this expectation or this idea that we have to do it all, right? And so we're saying yes to everything or we're trying to do everything because we think that's what we should, but like, that's not possible, Mm -hmm. right? Like there's just no way that we can do it all or even do it all well. And so what ends up happening and is, you know, if you're saying yes to a lot of things, you know, let's say it's at work or outside of work, and then you come home and you're completely depleted, you're, you know, you're exhausted, you're tired, you don't have a lot of emotional energy, then you're not really at home in a way that you want to be maybe with your kids, or you're not able to do the things that you wanted to do that's important to you. And then what happens is a lot of resentment and frustration starts to Mm -hmm. build because you're not able to give the time and energy to the things that you really want to be able to give the time and energy to. And so really getting clear on 
what are my priorities? What do I really like? What is really matters to me? And then focusing, saying yes on the things that are going to kind of help keep you in line with that and aligned with sure. that. Um, and kind of that listening to my inside voice and matching like my outside and inside, that's been something that I myself have had to work on a lot because I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say no. You know, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. But then I realized that when I say no to something, it makes me feel uncomfortable, you know, for what, however, you know, the rest of the day or whatever. But if I'm saying yes to something that I don't really want to do, or that's taking me away from what I actually want to be doing or my kids or my family, that is a discomfort that is far worse to me. And so being able to kind of listen to, you know, kind of what your, your inside voice is saying and starting to kind of, um, recognize it and honor it, even if, you know, 10 situations come up in a day, if you can do one, even if it's a tiny little Mm -hmm. one, you know, it's kind of like exercise and building that, that habit, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. And it gets easier with time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, I know over the last couple of years, I've tried to find values with my, um, or self values. I feel like values is kind of a little bit of a subjective term, but I know like if you search on the internet, like there's a bunch of value lists out there that give all sorts of adjectives and lists of like 50 different items. So I, for me, like I looked at it and just wrote down five and um, I noticed that like adventure, exploration, those were part of my top five values. So it really made me then be like, okay, you know, this is what my inside voice is wanting to do more. This is what I want to do. So let me go ahead and schedule travel more in my life or figure out how I'm going to make mm-hmm. that work because I, I truly do value that. That fills my cup up. And when my cup is full, it helps me with being, you know, a more present mom or more present with my family. Um, so that's, I, I feel like for me, that helps with the, you know, examining my values when I think about priorities. Yes, absolutely. And that's a lot. Um, I've talked about that before on my social media and with clients about mm-hmm. values. And so I kind of, <clears throat> I started using the word priorities because I think for some people that made a little bit more sense. Um, But I do think like values and priorities are, you know, can kind of overlap. But yes, identifying what, you know, what truly matters to you, what your values are in life, it not only helps you at home, um, but it can even help you in your career. Because one of the things that I realized when um, I was working at some of my previous jobs is one of the things that I really valued about working in healthcare, being a nurse, being a nurse practitioner, is having time to kind of talk with Mm -hmm. people. Like what I'm, I'm, um, I did like a personality, um, test and like a strengths Mm -hmm. assessment and I'm a relationship builder. So like, I'm really good at building relationships and it's also something that's like important to me. And I really kind of thrive Mm -hmm. on. Um, and so I ended up making some career changes so that what I was doing for work kind of followed that as well. So that way I was kind of also doing work that more aligned with that, which also makes a big difference because then, you know, it's like I'm doing work that feels good to Mm -hmm. me as well. Absolutely. I think that's great, a great idea and great points because it really is all about alignment and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, So Amber, there's so much information that you have to share. Like, how can we contact you to learn more um, or any other um, ways that we can um, get information? Sure. Um, my Instagram is dnp.amber. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Facebook as well, Amber Gilbert. And then I also have my email, which is ambergilbertcoaching at gmail.com. Okay, wonderful. And I'll put those all in the show notes. So our listeners, yeah, you're welcome. And our listeners will be able to um, access that. And um, you you can um, also check out um, more podcast episodes and subscribe and be the first to get new episodes that are relevant to moms. 
So thank you so much for listening and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And thank you, Amber.